Ar arcade, but it's we've got Queen Box technology. So um, if you're not familiar with Queen Box, they're awesome, uh, and they they it automatically gives you like to clean the HMDs. And you so you take it up there, you throw on the HMD, and mm -hmm. you just load Matt. a workout. So like as your chest presses or whatever, your you're playing a game at the same time and trying. Okay. To, um, yeah. Trying Excellent. to, uh, so, yeah. to, to, to accomplish tasks. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Let's, let's crack on with that conversation in a second. Are you amplified? Can you click on the megaphone? Please, I mate? just did. I just did. No, you just did. Thanks very much. I'm glad you're back. Yeah. But, but we caught most of it. And uh, certainly, uh, yeah, it's. Um, um, and uh, what about the, uh, I don't know, the changing rooms? Is there some kind of VR app which makes you feel like, uh, you know, you're not surrounded by sweaty, ugly men? <laughs> 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 you know, it's definitely the nicest, highest class gym I've ever been to. <laughs> they're, they're beautiful, <laughs> beautiful yeah, gyms. Good. So. Okay. Oh, the gyms That's or the men, good. right, okay. Um, good. <laughs> Well, let's, let's move on away from uh, changing rooms um, and look at the first thing which I put up here. Now, you only use this brand. Why? You know why? This is a total mistake. So well, I got into photography because I am the CEO of a visual computing company in Seattle, Washington, and it takes a lot of time, so I just wanted to do something to feed my soul and get me out of <laughs> Like out of the all, I threw my house out of behind a computer, <laughs> like outside. Yeah. So I walked to our mall one time. I wanted to buy a camera, and I walked to the mall, and the camera shop that I went to had closed, but they opened another camera shop, uh, which is the Leica camera shop. I didn't even know what a Leica was. I, I, I wasn't even saying. I was calling it like a Leica or something. <laughs> so that's literally why I just walked in. The guys were really cool. They set me up with a camera, and I just got addicted to them. Um, but wow. since then, that's why I started. Uh, um, but since then, can I, let me see, I have to get higher, make me louder, is that any, any better? Yeah, you can turn your volume up, I think, if you hover over the microphone. Just I just, there and I, just it, it, it his megaphone went off, button. I had to turn it back on again. Oh, Michael. okay, thank you for that. Is yeah, that better, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. yes, okay, it keeps cool. going on. Awesome. You need to All right. Move. Yeah, so um, the Leica cameras are great. They have really good glass, and they're like tough as tanks. So yeah, they're uh, great. highly recommended. Durable, yeah. excellent, durable. And it, yep. it, does, it gets pretty cold out there. Does it over in the uh, over in Seattle? <laughs> it does. It gets a little chilly. <laughs> yeah. So they can handle the cold and the rain. You don't have to worry about sure. it. Sure durability and, and now listen you didn't send me this photo but I, I, I need to give a bit of background now um no that isn't me 15 pounds overweight a few years ago in my back garden and um, that that basically is the oldest photo because you sent me some great photos i thought well how can i connect you to a little bit about the conversation so that is the oldest photo i have of someone in my family um his name um was uh, john uh oh god i can't remember i can't remember my own family but anyway he was born in uh uh, eight, oh, John Turpin was his name, and he was born in 1852, and he died in about 1930. And I found this on Ancestry.com's website uh, through kind of a friend of a friend, and uh, he's directly related to me. And um, you know, this is something that I think is what was really reflected in the photos you sent me. It reflects really the, the culture you're surrounded in. It's a piece of you, possibly, so we could get a bit deeper into that. And, and this is one of the things that are, you know, are kind of photos. You're never gonna want to kind of lose that ability to kind of have a photo in your hand because with all this di digital revolution Matt, what would you say about that in terms of actually printing photos is that something that you do absolutely yeah that's actually a good that's a really really good point so more photo more, more photos are taken now than ever before in human history and in fact we actually create more data per second than have ever been created in human history <laughs> so all like combined all combined Wow. So, um, yeah, so it's, and it's because of, of, there's a lot of noise, social media, you know, there's a lot of mm. you know, data going back and forth on networks, but nothing's printed. Nothing is printed. So if networks go down and you can't access your cloud servers, you have no, no record of your photographs. And taking a photo and printing it out is, a, is, is really the only way to have a physical record. Um, 
of, of that experience. Uh, so I actually yes. print out, I, I do digital photography, but I primarily do film photography and I develop my own film at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, I like the old school, as someone who's the CEO of a, com of a technology company, right, spatial computing, yeah. uh, going very, very low tech like that uh, is a nice thing to do. It's a nice juxtaposition. Yeah. And do you have, uh, is there like one photo that's been handed down to you, kind of grabbed from an older family member that you've got in your possession? I don't, and, and that's why. So I literally only have one photo from my childhood, just one okay. of me yeah. from my childhood. Okay. Um, so we, like, uh, we lost a lot of the photos uh, in one of our houses years and years and years ago. So, mm -hmm. so printing out those artifacts is pretty important. Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. Okay. But but I do I do on. have yes, I I have sure. purchased old photos from yes. this this great website called Magnum. If you just go to Magnum, look look at Google Magnum photography. Um, they have really iconic photos that you can purchase from history, uh, and you can own yes. you can own one of the original prints. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, definitely check that out. Magnum. So, um, and when we talk about you know cameras, I mean, we we all remember these days. Are we developing those <laughs> films? Was that was that ever kind of a? T I know you said you got into photography as almost like an escape away from maybe the, the being stuck at the desk or the, the technology. But did you, did you experiment much with these? With, uh, I guess you had always one of these in your back pockets, didn't you, when you were traveling? Yeah. So I actually primarily use what my 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 go to camera is a Leica M six. Uh, it was. Mm. So I, I have two cameras. I have a lot of Leicas, but my two primary cameras are a Leica M3 that was built in 1951, still works, zero issues with that thing. And I have a Leica M6, which is an amazing, amazing camera. And that one was built in 1986, uh, 84, 1984. And it, uh, and I primarily only shoot film with those and I'll scan to digital. But this, this loading the film and, you know, that's, uh, I'm an old pro at that right now. I did not know yeah. what I was doing when I first, I, I never got into photography uh, until a few years ago. I, I, I just had yeah. no interest in it. So yeah, um, yeah. I never really used these until recently. Sure, so it's a release for you. And this is one of the first photos that you sent me. Talk to us about this. Yeah, so this was a photo that I took with my Leica Q. Um, mm. And this was, I, I used a 28 millimeter lens on this one, uh, what's called fully open. So it's a lens that goes to F2. It just, the, the amount of aperture, you can open up your aperture very wide to let a lot of light in, or you can open it up very small. So mine was at F2, the lens goes up to F16, which brings the aperture down really small, lets less light in. So if it's a sunny day, you close your aperture. If, if you want uh, what's called good depth of field, or it's not so sunny, you open the aperture. So this one was taken at the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C. And I was there on business, actually. Uh, the DOD is a big customer of ours, of uh, my company, Doghead Simulations. And so after our meetings, I always carry a camera with me. Um, there's a guy, his name is Thorsten Overgaard, and he has a, he's a famous photographer, and he has a, um, a saying that's always wear a camera. So, so I adopted that. And uh, I was walking around the memorials and I saw this little boy just playing hide and seek, uh, like, like, hot, like scooting around the memorial, hiding from his brother. And I saw the snap and so I took it. And that's one thing that's important in photography is to capture what they call the decisive moment. Um, that's why you carry a camera because you may not, you won't be able to replicate this and you may not ever see it again, no. so. No. Yeah, amazing, okay. So, um, and, and do you think that the photography, kind of looking through the lens at, the, at these things has brought you closer to other subjects you might not have really touched on in the past, like, for example, history? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 100% true. Yes, uh, totally. Um, yeah. okay. So with, with photography, like, it really helps you see the world, right? Like, we see the yeah. world, we, we experience the world, but we never truly see the world. And so once yes. you start seeing the world through a small aperture, I primarily use rangefinder cameras. Actually, I only use rangefinders. It's a, just a type of camera. Um, yeah. You you just see the world in very different ways, and you're always kind of looking for moments like that. Yeah, yeah. You help no, to connect. Think, um, 
Absolutely, yeah. And, and there's a great exercise we did actually with Laurel about uh, 72,000 hours ago when we were um, uh, <laughs> kind of still in all space. And, and we actually did a round robin to build creative writing skills. And what we did, we were over there by the window in a circle and one person start, or Laurel started with a sentence and the next person had to continue a story. And, uh, and, and it was a really great way to kind of get laser focused into people's creativity and fixing, because it's very easy these days to be swamped by the data, the words, the numbers, the, the images but actually to be at one with, for example, a pen and paper or a camera, I, I guess is something we should constantly try to find throughout the year, isn't it? There's a kind of a release from all of this noise, as you put it earlier. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, good. I, I, and one final kind of anecdote. I remember I was in Florence uh, a few years ago. Um, can we get any hearts? Anyone been to Florence? Matt, have you been there? Northern Italy? I love it. Yeah, there. Love it. Uh, yeah, very, very beautiful. But I'm... Um, I'm not the most, um, how can I say, uh, uh, I don't know, um, I'm slightly ignorant when it comes to art. Let's just put it like that. And um, I don't really understand anything. So I'm walking around for about three hours with this camera taking like a hundred pictures. And um, at one point I was like looking around surrounded by people from all around the world taking photos of uh, monuments and statues and, uh, uh, and things like that. And Dante's house and the sign above it where it said he lived there. And, and it was... Um, uh, and I thought, what am I doing? I don't know what I'm taking pictures of. Really. It looked nice, but I didn't understand anything. I mean, what could you say about that for people wanting to get into photography? I mean, is it a case of buying the camera, going out and just experimenting? Or do you recommend kind of swatting up reading books or tutorials before? Well, I will tell you from my, that's a great question. So from my personal experience, like I'm always learning. So I'm actually completing a degree right now in photojournalism at the New York mm. Institute of Photography in my copious amounts of spare time. <laughs> so, but, but I'll tell you one thing I've learned uh, is I started shooting photos prior to having an academic experience with it. And I honestly believe that the best thing to do is just get out there and shoot. Just get out there and start shooting photos. But, but keep yourself from taking a million photos. So if you have a digital camera, kind of pretend like it's a film camera and pretend like you only have a precious 35 shots of, you know, or 36 shots available and walk around or, or, or pretend like you only have five shots left on your roll, right? Even if you have a digital camera and walk around and just look for decisive moments like this and snap only those, because I guarantee you there's something called workflow. So when you're mm -hmm. taking photos, you then after that need to do something with those photos. And typically that's load them into Lightroom, fix, you know, tweaks here and there. It's a lot of work and people don't like doing that. <laughs> they like the act of taking photos. So yeah. um, the workflow can be quite extensive. It can be a big time commitment. So I would say try to limit the amount of photos and look for decisive moments. Yeah, excellent advice. Yeah, great. Just get out there and do it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, and that's, again, actually really interesting you said that because someone in the creative writing uh, session earlier was just like, it's very easy to kind of get, um, you know, this uh, stuck writer's block, but just write words on paper and see where it takes you. So it could be kind of very similar to what you're talking about there. Let's move to mm -hmm. the second image that you sent over. Um, uh, yeah, you're, you, you, you've got a few <laughs> tattoos, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> I look like I've either been in prison or the military because I have so many tattoos. <laughs> but... Uh, this is my favorite tattoo. This is the primary camera. So my baby, I don't have children. I definitely consider my Leica M6 my child. This is a yeah. film camera. I got it tattooed and I'll, I'll actually do this in public and people kind of look at me like, like they'll put their hands up like I'm taking a photo of them. <laughs> yeah, at a distance, it can be quite confusing. Yeah, so you, it's kind you've of got fun. your, uh, so, sorry, that was the very first tattoo you got, was it? No, this was probably the thousandth tattoo that I got. Okay. Right. <laughs> but this okay. is this is my favorite tattoo. Yeah. And what number was Anderson Pooper? <laughs> so uh, Michael is referring to uh, the logo of my company. The logo of my so the name of my company that I own is Dockhead Simulations. Okay. Uh, we've been around four years. Where we make a virtual reality program, um, kind of like Allspace. And our logo is a dog. Uh, it's a real dog, 
It is my co-founder, Chance Glasgow. Chance Glasgow uh, is a co-founder of the company that created Call of Duty. And um, I believe Call of Duty Modern Warfare was actually his idea. I can't, don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure it was. <laughs> but um, um, his dog is named Anderson Cooper, uh, like Anderson Cooper. And when we got our company funded, I had our logo, which is a photo of his dog tattooed on my left bicep. <laughs> so. uh, and that's probably quite, quite stretched out. Yeah, that's, I can imagine he looks a little bit different now after all those push-ups, Matt, you've been doing. This, um, <laughs> he does. All right. Cool. He does. Jump to the next photo. This isn't you, is it? That is me on the weekends. No, <laughs> this is not me. <laughs> so this uh, is a photo that I took on May Day up here in Seattle, every May 1st, they have, uh, they celebrate something called May Day. And I think they do it all over the world. But in Seattle, they have riots. They literally like almost burn the city to the ground every single May 1st. Uh, so they have like anarchists come out and people riot. And what this is, is this is a picture of a girl who's a nurse and she shows up to the riots every year and she provides medical aid the people that are in right so she's very easy to spot nobody messes with her and i saw her there just standing there and i snapped a photo of it i submitted it to the lfi magazine which is a leica photography international it's a magazine that publishes photos uh after they've been selected by a jury of professional photographers so think like photojournalists you know wedding photographers primarily photojournalists and so they selected this one uh, for their LFI magazine two years ago. And this Excellent. actually was on the cover of their portrait, uh, huh. the portrait yeah. section. Now, let's talk about foreign languages, Matt, because you, uh, you have Spanish uh, heritage. Is that right? I do. I, I do. <laughs> Sorry, I almost started speaking Spanish too. Yes, I do. <laughs> well, so my my my. my my father's family is from Spain, from Zaragoza, uh, España, and my okay. mother's family is from Mexico or Mexico. So I uh, think uh, Durango, Chihuahua. And so I'm actually okay. half Mexican, half Spanish, even though I look like, yeah. a, like a white Jew. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm half Nothing Mexican, wrong half with that, Spanish. Matt. Yeah, Nothing that's wrong with it. That. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, we've. Um, yeah, we, yeah, the reason I ask you that is because uh, if anybody out there is looking to sit a foreign language exam, in particular English or Spanish, whatever, you're going to need to know how to describe photographs. And the reason I got Matt along today is because not just he's a, he's a great kind of public speaker and uh, charismatic and he's clearly a good photographer, but it's just a great opportunity to learn a little bit more about how to describe photographs. So um, for anybody that is interested in one iota or for the YouTube audience further down the line, I mean, obviously you've got colours there, you've got roller skates, you've got knee pads the woman is looking maybe uh to in front of her she's wearing a helmet she's got the the red cross there which is actually interestingly above the uh the screen now for the italian red cross she's got some wings some fairy rings uh wings on and um she's got the arm pads as well in the background as well as a key word you could see you could see some scaffolding i think it's quite an industrial looking uh, environment you've got the the shadow there casted along the maybe the street or the alleyway uh you've got some uh, it's quite a clean environment, that Matt. I mean, that's uh, that's in Seattle, is it? Sorry, it is in Seattle. This was yeah. uh, just before the Mayday riots kicked off, so it's pristine, okay. <laughs> right? Pristine condition. All right, then, good. And I probably use half of that scaffolding as well to throw at the uh, the, the authorities and various institutions. <laughs> All right, good. Um, we are going to move to the next photo. What do we have here? Look at that. Okay, so this is a photo that I took in a neighborhood here in Seattle. I was driving through a neighborhood called Beacon Hill, and it's kind of like an older neighborhood. Uh, it's a very ethnic neighborhood, and I have a lot of Chinese friends that live there. So I was actually visiting one of my Chinese friends here, and I drove by this house. Uh, and this, oddly enough, this weird black chair was just sitting. It was just, it was just there in front of this house with the Virgin Mary. So I thought it was kind of an odd scene. So I pulled over my car. I had my camera with me, of course. And uh, I took this photo with my Leica M6. I had, um, I think I had a roll of uh, Kodak Portra. 
uh, 400 speed inside my Leica M6, which is an old school film camera. And I took this photo, I uh, printed it out, and I submitted it to Leica, and it actually uh, was judged by you know the professionals to be a good photo. And so they selected this one to be in their, I think their urban landscapes. I forget. I'm pretty sure it was urban landscapes. But um, uh, so this one actually made it into LFI magazine as well. And, and, yeah. I, and I named yeah. this one uh, the Virgin Mary's Orphan Chair. So kind of wow. fitting. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Good. And, you know, this is. Um... We, we've got like uh, now. I, I have no idea about that any of the technical terminology here, but I can see some like shading in the bottom corners here. Is that intentional? What's that about? Yeah. So, so that when I printed out the photo, I actually scanned it, and because I had to submit it electronically, I can just mail okay. them a photo. <laughs> so I scanned yeah. the photo, and in there's this program called Lightroom, and I actually added a vignette. Um, a vignette hmm. creates like a shadowing. Uh, effect around the photo. Um, so I, this was early, early on. This was one of the first rolls of, of photos that I took and I didn't really know what I was doing. So I did, I added way too much, too much dark vignetting here on the edges, mm -hmm. uh, but they still liked it. So. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. All right. Well, we're, we're hoovering up some more vocabulary. We've got the vignetting, the corners, the, the darkness there, uh, over it, exposed, maybe the words you touched on earlier. And um, by the way, if you have any questions, we forgot to turn on the uh, hand raised button. So I'm just going to turn it on right now. If you've got any questions for Matt, um, then now's the time to ask. You just look down in the bottom right corner of your screen. You can click ha uh, raise hand. We can come to you immediately. Uh, I'm actually going to put a few questions to you. We've got... Um, uh, Margie, you're in the house. There you are. I can see there. You've been with us for much of the uh, the best part of today. Thanks for your support. Are you a keen sure. photographer yourself? I love to do photography. I'm not very good at it, but I keep trying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, my, okay. And I loved what you were talking about in, in your endeavor to take photographs and good ones. Um, I love to listen to DeWitt Jones. Oh, yeah. We show his... Um, videos in my leadership classes on just, and he often says, just wait, just wait. And um, it reminded me when you said that, it reminded me of him. So um, yeah. your photo yes, are, are just- Yeah, I totally wonderful. subscribe to that. Like I'm not a big fan of going out and just snapping a bunch of photos. I like to just wait for that decisive moment. And you know, you know, it's, it's kind of an emotional experience and you just know when it happens. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks, Margie. And we've got yeah, Nick um, in Canada. Well, I actually, I took photography for three years, man. I got to say your photos are great. Um, oh, so, thank you, man. I appreciate it. You know, yeah, I just want to say I'm excited to learn what we can learn from you, man. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it. been a, it's been a fun experience. I, I really appreciate your comments. Thank you. And what about the, um, you know, we live in a world that is, a, not only, you know, everybody's got a camera now in their pocket pretty much, haven't you? You know, like, um, high quality camera. What, what, what do you think about that? I mean, is that kind of devaluing photography? What, what's the kind of general consensus among people who maybe take it a bit more seriously like you do? You know, I will tell you, if I could make money, like, like pay my bills as a photojournalist, I'd quit my job as CEO and <laughs> probably just do that full time because I love it that much. I really love it, but it's kind of hard to make a living. There's, there's really, really good uh, photographers out there. Um, but uh, I will tell you, the best camera you have is the one that you have in your pocket. Um, you don't need to go spend a bunch of money on a, a Leica. They're pretty expensive or a Hasselblad. I mean, there's no one really knows the difference actually <laughs> they, most people can't tell the difference between a really expensive like a five thousand dollar camera and a fifteen dollar camera um because it's really up to the photographer yeah it's up to the photographer yeah. and uh yeah it's just whatever you got sure. that, that works for you okay yeah and also I guess uh, we spoke about a world surrounded by information and that, and, and also it's a world surrounded maybe by this striving for perfection because you turn on the TV, you put on, to, you know, you have a look on the, the internet and it's surrounded by beautiful people, beautiful bodies and, um, uh, and, and that's it. And you kind of actually uh, maybe just experimenting more. We spoke with that at the uh, top of this block with, uh, or actually the first hour of the, a few hours ago with the, the Smithson family and, uh, and uh, Daniel Blair out in Canada. And it, maybe I think sometimes 
you think there's a bit too much pressure to get that ultimate shot well actually if you just kind of experiment a little bit you could actually bring out that perfection in imperfection as well I think there's a lot of beauty in imperfection. I think that's very, yeah. very well said. And the Smithsons are awesome. They're all total class acts, you know, Julie and, yeah. and, um, sure. um and, oh, shoot, uh, what's Alan. his name? Alan thing. I was gonna call him Michael. Yeah, they're, they're, they're great. They're wonderful, wonderful people. Um, Alan is, uh, one of the guys that used our software from the virtually day one. Um, so he, yeah. he's great, but you know, there's a lot, you know, every day is not a sunny day. Um, but I think a lot of people's social media feeds, uh, uh, have, they don't have people believe that. We all know it's not true. So um, yeah. even though I have an MBA in social media marketing, I am not a fan of social media <laughs> marketing, actually. Um, yeah. It's uh, just because I, I don't believe that, I think we're using it wrong. I think it can be really, really mm -hmm. bad for you um, yeah. when you're trying to, to, um, to blur the line between perception and reality. So I, I'm yes. a big fan. Yeah. 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 Great. I've got a follow up question, Steph. I think Diamond might, um, uh, Margie, you, sure. did you want to say something? You've muted I was yourself. Curious. Right, we go. I did, didn't I? <laughs> I was curious if you like it. Well, if you prefer photographing inanimate objects or people or activities or do you have a preference? That's a, that's a great, great question. So when I first got into photography, I honestly did not know what the heck I was doing. So I, I just kind of stumbled along. And I actually feel like some of my best photographs were taken when I had no idea what I was doing. Um, <laughs> but I, because I was so ignorant and new at it and, you know, but, but anyway, I will tell you that I really love street photography. Um, so it basically you just go out i live in seattle i live in downtown seattle um and i have a place in downtown bellevue as well two different cities so i like and i'm usually traveling to a city of some sort um not now but when we can travel and i'll just walk around the cities and i like taking photos of whatever strikes me it could be a landscape it could be people um but i just like taking pictures of life like kind of taking like a slice of life um, and I really do enjoy, oddly enough, conflict photography. So going to like conflict zones like Iraq and Afghanistan and, you know, getting photos of that life because to them, it's just normal life. It's just a normal part. They're, it's, they're normal. And to us, it's, it's very, very abnormal. Um, so I like, I like kind of bearing witness to, to just slices of life. You know, what, yeah. what about you? Do you, yeah, you have this particular type of, uh, of um, photography that you like? I think I like doing animals. Okay, um, yeah. I just came in, I submitted my first picture and I came into our Louisville magazine in Kentucky and I came in 13th and I just thought I was just the, bee, the bee's knees. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats, that's great. It was just so cool. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, it was, it was very affirming. Um, to do that. Sure. So. Yeah, That's congratulations. Right. I love it. I love it. The world, <laughs> I can just tell you this right now, the world needs more artists. So get out Absolutely. there and create. Yeah. Exactly. And we've got another question. Anna, are you there? My iPhone. <laughs> Anna, Anna, we've put you on loudspeaker, I think. Hang on. Yeah, you're on megaphone. Anna Carolina, do you want to say something? Uh, I speak English, maybe. You speak English fantastically. Continue. Maybe, maybe I understand much as uh, what you say, but I speak English. Maybe I'm from Brazil. You're from Brazil. Welcome. So you speak yes. Portuguese. Oh. Yes. Portuguese, uh, como un bebé. I <laughs> don't know how much now. Monero. <laughs> 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 I love it, love it. Right, we're going to leave Matt and Anna to get on with this conversation. We're going to go downstairs <laughs> and let them get on. With um, we, you, yeah, you, yeah. You, you two need you need two need to add each other's friends and hook up after this meeting. Um, yeah. So, um, Anna, Anna, can I ask you a question? Do you, do you take photographs often? Do you have a, a good camera like Matt? Um, 
this picture um, in Brazil yeah. have a, a small cases coronavirus. Oh, and okay. So, okay. Yeah, so they can't get out and, and shoot ah, right now. Eu falo pouco sure. inglês. I speak maybe. It's okay. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's good. That's it's good. great. It's good. We, good to have you here. And yeah, she's looking it's at the photo up there, I think. It's a yes lesson for English? Yes and no. It's a uh, class? Yes, we're going to, yes, Anna, we're going to describe some of the next photos. Yes. So welcome to the lesson. We can learn some English. Okay. Uh, thank you. No problem. If you have questions, you can ask. We've got another question from someone in the house. Who's this? This is Devon, I think. Devon, far away. Yeah, um, I just wanted to ask uh, two questions, actually. So, first one is, though, is Dio, um, what do you shoot on? And then, second of, um, second of all, how has the coronavirus affected you? Because I'm, uh, I'm a photographer myself. I do fashion. Um, but I've noticed that it's been harder to shoot with people during this time period right now. So I'm curious if you've been shooting it to circumvent that. Um, so, yeah. yeah, that's a great... That's a great question, man. So, um, I, so, so I am, as you know, I'm the, the CEO of a software startup. So my bread and butter is breaking the rules, right? So, um, I, even though, um, we are on lockdown on with coronavirus, I have been driving around in my car. Um, I actually have an N95 respirator mask that I wear during the riots. When I go photograph the riots <laughs> here in Seattle, every May day. So um, I, I've been donning my N95 respirator mask and driving out and trying to get capture different scenes of life. So I have a whole photo essay of the complete and total barren emptiness of downtown Seattle. And wow. there's a particular area in downtown Seattle called Pioneer Square that's now completely overrun with, uh, I'm not sure they're homeless, but um, it, probably a mix of like homeless and you know, drug abusers, it's, it's pretty bad, actually. And, and so I've been taking scenes of, of that as well, because that is their new normal now. So it's, it's kind of interesting what's happening. But I primarily for a camera, you know, I primarily mm. travel almost mm. daily, definitely daily with my Leica M6 and my Leica M3 uh, film cameras. And I'll usually have like my Leica Q with me just as a backup digital camera. Um, yeah. But it, I don't think it matters. Sure. Yeah, it's just kind of like whatever you have. What, what kind of, what are you shooting with right now? Yeah, that's, I, 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 and actually when you were saying earlier how um, it doesn't really matter what you shoot on, I kind of backed that up enough just because myself, I'm a self-taught photographer. And so I started off on a piece of crap like Nikon um, 10 years ago and just started going from there. And so it really is what you have, it's what you can do with it and what you learn to do with it. It's all about Canon. Um, so now I'm shooting on a um, 5D Mark IV. Actually, I use a so Canon. A Canon. Um, Let's see. And yeah, that's a great camera. Um, yeah, it's just like that's a good. Go yeah, that's a good piece of kit. Um, they're they're tough as hell too. Those those are really good. But yeah, like I, you know, if you got a everybody has a phone in their pocket meaning everyone's a photographer now so everybody, everybody's and there's some stunning stunning photographs coming out of just phones now so there's oh, yeah. a good instagram called uh, yeah there's a good instagram called iphone only mm -hmm. yeah cool man awesome okay okay thanks for the questions and uh, just to recap again, this, as Anna said, is this an English lesson, Anna? Well, yes, it is, kind of, and this was the purpose of the event, because Matt just used a great expression there. He said, uh, it's a, a great piece of kit, K-I-T, a great piece of kit. In other words, good uh, tools, good uh, equipment to help uh, Devon take his photographs. So these are natural expressions that we're hearing from American English. So, um, yeah, we, we're going to pick up some more vocabulary as we go along. But let's jump forward now to the next photo I can see there are possibly some more questions in the pipeline but the next photo is this and this is you isn't it <laughs> that is me you can see the mm -hmm. very dark circles under my eyes so I recently it's very cold mm -hmm. still up here in downtown Seattle and I recently so since the coronavirus started um, this was very very early in when it started but in the first nine days of it happening in Wuhan, China, our users at my company went up 
uh, and we make an, a virtual reality education and training platform. So I have, for probably the last couple of months, I've been sleeping about two or three hours every two or three days. And before the virus hit the US, I actually still went on my daily photo walk. And that is me after, no, I'm sorry, this was almost two straight days of no sleep. And so I was like, you know what? I got to get out there and feed my soul. So I threw on my camera. I actually have a Leica SL on, on this one, but I have an M lens. I have a 75 millimeter manual focus Leica M lens. I just like the manual nature of working a camera manually. And that was after almost two straight days of no sleep, uh, going on a photo walk with a buddy of mine who couldn't get enough photos of my, the bags under my eyes. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's, that's, and, and why weren't you sleeping that? Was that because of working on your projects there with your company because of the, uh, the, the surge in demand? Yeah, we, we have, it's hard to keep up with the surge in demand right now because of the, the virus. And yeah. for us, it's been happening since the first cases started coming out of China. Our, our demand okay. skyrocketed. So um, I've been working just trying to help people around the world adopt our software so that they can experience as minimal interruptions to their work and school life as possible um yeah so and we opened it up for free so we didn't want to be yes. seen as a virus profit here so we were just like you know what the world can have our software for free we're not and and, and as ceo i'm not taking a salary for the rest of the year either um because i don't think it's right <laughs> to do that yeah. so um we uh that, that's why there's bags under my eyes <laughs> okay well, well done. You've you've explained you've explained the bags, and um, yeah, I, I think uh, as well. Yeah, if you don't know Rumi, uh, check that as R U M I I. It's a different kind of virtual space that you can visit. We're in Oort space now. There's Rumi as well, and you should definitely check that out because that offers other capabilities. For example, you can have these three D models that you can very easily bring into the space, and uh, and we saw some of those in the previous lessons today. So definitely check out Rumi if you're not familiar with that. Um, let's move on to the next next photo then uh, that's that's you what, what were you taking a picture of there uh i was taking a picture of a dude smoking a joint in public <laughs> <laughs> up here. so in seattle if you're not familiar we have um pretty liberal cannabis laws and uh i just saw this guy puffing away and i was like oh that's a great great photo so uh i snapped yeah. a bunch of, of of snaps of him just puffing away in public um it yeah. was it was, it was, they were they're great photos, but I didn't know kind of what the audience was here, so I didn't submit those photos for this talk. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, yes, okay. So you, you come on to the next question is like, what, what people's reaction is to you taking photos of them? Have you ever had any kind of confrontational situations? What's the story there? I never have. So I, um, I, I know a lot of photographers probably do, but there's uh, this guy, Robert Kappa, he's a famous, famous photographer, and he had these sayings. Uh, he's, he's one of the first conflict photographers from the Spanish Civil War. He has these famous photos um, from, from the Spanish Civil War and on. And uh, I actually have one of the original prints from his, he was the only photographer to, to go in with the troops on D-Day. And uh, I think he had a Leica M3 film camera. And so there, I, I have a, one of his actual prints from D-Day, from the D-Day invasion, um, wow. showing the rawness of that reality. And he had these two sayings. One of them was, if your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough. So you got to get close to your subject, but you also have to be kind of like a fly on the wall, right? Like he said, um, I forget what the, what the saying, exact saying was, but um, be invisible be invisible so it's being as invisible as possible so this this what you're seeing here this represents about maybe half a second um so this is a manual lens um manual lenses in my opinion focus a lot quicker than autofocus lens because in street photography i'll set it to uh to focus at an auto like a like a full, certain focal length so usually about two or three meters and that way, when I pull up the camera, I just snap it and I put it back down. I don't even need to focus. I don't need to manually focus. It's already set. I don't need to work with an autofocus. I just pull it up, snap it, and put it back down. So it's probably less than half a second right here. But my buddy, who couldn't get enough of my freaking dark eyes, <laughs> dark circles, had his his iPhone on me the entire time. So. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, um, all right, good. And then we spoke actually, uh, and as we approach the final five minutes of this very informative uh, chat, is is the um, the element of the fact that you started photography as an escape in some ways from, let's say, the technological mayhem or you know, kind of a busy nature of your work. But what about this kind of osmosis of photography feeding back into the work that you do? I mean, has it changed your perspective of the way you go about your business? I oh, mean, that's such a good question. Yes, it absolutely has. It absolutely has. So um, it's given me a very deep appreci appreciation for art, uh, something I had before, yes. but not in this personal way. Um, and I've always been a firm believer that the world needs more artists. But in this kind of context, like it, in my work, in, in an immersive context, um, we are actually kind of viewing the world in our HMDs as though we're looking through a camera. So we have a certain field of view, right? You can't see, you don't have very good peripheral vision, just like you're looking through a rangefinder. So it, it focuses your attention forward. Um, and I like it because it, it creates a better uh, relationship, a more immersive relationship between you and your subject. And your subject could be you, Michael, like you and I are talking right now. So I'm fully immersed in you. Um, and I feel like it's just giving me a better appreciation for building the three-dimensional worlds and the interactions that we're having so yeah yeah awesome okay we've got a few questions like buddy sorry you've been very very patient far away buddy do you want to try again can you have you fixed your audio uh, you're on megaphone yeah uh, i'm not on megaphone yet but my audio is working yeah we, we can hear you loud and clear oh um you are hilarious with these pictures. The guy, you just take a shot of the guy with the joint. You're like, oop, look at this guy with a joint. Oh, I'm <laughs> okay, and then you just like that. Oh, he looking at me? Oh, no, oh, no. I'm just, I'm just going to call coffee on call free. <laughs> I, I know about 10 minutes later, you went up to him and said, hey, let me get some of that. <laughs> Do you take photos, buddy? Are you a photographer yourself? Um, I do a little dabble here and there. Yeah, yeah. What's your What's the best picture you've ever taken? Can you Can you name one? Uh, uh ooh, that's a friends. Problem. I mean, I take prank videos of people, um, oh, and I right. take a picture of them. And like one time, we I went over to a sleepover, and I took <laughs> I took a picture huh? of my friend. No, actually, all the way around. People came to my house, and this lady actually came over. She didn't mean to spend the night, but she fell asleep on her couch. I took a picture of her, and <laughs> I didn't. I made I made some like uh, edits to her face. Yeah, I had a caption that said, "Look, I'm a clown," and it was so funny. I showed it to her. She was busting out laughing. It was real. Excellent. The great contribution, and that's the thing, isn't it? It's the ability to not just take the photo, but to edit it and to add stuff on top of it as well, isn't it? Yeah, you can. I, I try to, for my photos, I try to edit as minimally as possible now. Because um, I like to just show like the raw scene. But, but sure. you know, they, they, photos most definitely still do need to be edited slightly, for sure. Yeah, cleaned up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, we're approaching the runway, everybody. We're coming to the uh, the landing spot. And what I would just want to do, because we've got some so quite a good number here is where we've got Matt here. We're going to give a big round of applause first and foremost for Matt sharing his, uh, his great photography. Can we get some hands, some hearts, some smiley faces? There we go. If that's not a motivation boost, I don't know what is. <laughs> um, and then, uh, it, uh, what I want to do as well, well is just get a snap of all of you. Could you come towards the big screen, please? Because I want to bring up here um, just a little reminder of what we're doing standing here today. And it's to... Uh, register our support for the people fighting the coronavirus out in Italy, in particular in the south at the moment. And there's a hashtag we've got going, actually, which is very uh, common at the moment on Twitter. It's Andra Tutto Bene. Does anybody know what that means? Andra Tutto Bene. Matt, do you want to have a guess? Uh, uh, is it? Oh, well, I know what Tutto Bene means, but I'm not sure what Andra means. Is that someone's first name? No. Uh, good shout. It's basically it means it will be. It's the future of the, the verb to, to be. So, yeah, it will go well. So if you just want to face me towards this window, we're going to take a couple of photos. We're going to send this out to the Italians who are having a bit of a tough time at the moment, and I'm sure elsewhere in the world. So I think the camera's picking up that. And in three, two, one, give us some hearts. 
Excellent. All right. Thanks, everybody. We're going to stay in this space now for, I think, another five or six hours, and then it's bedtime for me. Matt, thanks again, mate. All the best. <laughs> thanks a lot for coming, everybody. And the next subject is food and drink. Yeah.